So that leads us to the ETC. So again, all of this occurs only when there's oxygen. So without oxygen, none of this happens. So let's talk about what where we are in this matter. Now before, when we're doing the citric acid cycle, we we're inside of the matrix, the goo that's on the inside of the mitochondria. This is going to take place right along that, um, that inner membrane. Um, just like before, we had the example of a dam, how there's a, a retaining wall. Uh, we simply build up a lot of resource on one side, and with dams, it's water. We build up a lot of water on one side, so it's the high pressure, high concentration of water, and then we let it flow through a valve uh, into an area of low concentration, so essentially from upstream flowing back to downstream. And as it goes through, it spins a turbine that generates power for us. Uh, same concept here. So let's look and see how we're going to do this. So first of all, here's the inner membrane space, right? That's where we're going to build up all the hydrogen ions. And then we have our inner membrane, and then on the inside we have the matrix. And again, the matrix is where the CAC is occurring. So everything that's going to come in, those uh, FADH2s and the NADHs, they're all coming from the matrix. So here they come. Here comes uh, those 10 NADHs. Remember, two from glycolysis, another two from the uh, acetylcholine cycle, and then six from the uh, CAC. Add them all together, that's our 10. And they come in and they simply drop off the uh, uh, hydrogens uh, with the excited electron. Instantly they split. The uh, electron goes one way, the proton goes another. Um, but that's not the only molecule that brings it in. Remember, we have those FADH2s. It comes in, it drops off their electrons, and becomes FADs, which then leave and go back to the, uh, uh, the citric acid cycle. So everything's kind of making their round trips. Um, so we, we end up getting a bunch of hydrogens uh, in the matrix. Um, and then the electrons essentially attach to the, uh, the inner membrane. There's a series of proteins in the, in the inner membrane that are going to act as the ETC, the electron transfer chain for these electrons. So what are these electrons doing as they, as they go through? Well, first of all, as they move, they're turning things, they end up losing their energy. But there's a bunch of these things coming through. So this process is, is it's really going, it's really doing its thing. And what's it doing? It's simply pumping hydrogen ions from one side to the other. They're going from low concentration, pushing them up to a high concentration, and that takes energy. So this process, the, uh, the, the photon, the energy from the sunlight, is used to, uh, um, to drive a, um, a, a concentration gradient difference pushing everything from low up to high. That's active transport. That takes energy. This is where it, this is where it all starts from. Once it, all these hydrogens build up on the inner, in the inner membrane space, we give them a valve to go through. And it's really easy for them to go through. It's, it's another one of those ATP synthases. Because what's it going to do? Well, as these hydrogens move through it, it's going to turn. It's going to take ADP and a phosphate. And you guessed it. Forever and always, it will become an ATP. But it's doing this rapidly. There's a lot of hydrogens on the opposite side. And as they come screaming through, they really give this thing a, a workout for its money. And um, I didn't put a number with this one because the numbers aren't so much important on this side. Just know it generates a lot of energy, anywhere between 32 and 40 ATP for humans. Um, and boom, there it is. We've, we've now have all of our ATP that we'll need to start doing a massive amount of cellular processes, anything from walking and running and jogging to other things like uh, just cellular digestion, folding in membranes to bring stuff into the cell, pushing out stuff, fighting diseases, you know, all the stuff that our body does, all our physiological processes that require energy, this is where they're getting it from. Um, so that's, I mean, it's, it's relatively important to know how we get the energy to do what we do. And again, it's little batteries, ATP or little batteries, we're battery powered. But we haven't quite accounted for everything yet that's in our um, that was in our equation. Uh, we've got the ATP at the end. We know this is all uh, you know. We we, have, we just have nothing. We've broken down the glucose. Uh, we've released the CO2, but we haven't done anything with water yet, and we haven't done anything with oxygen yet. So let's look at the loose ends. There's two. First of all, we have this electron. It's depleted itself of its excess energy, but it's still an electron. And again, electricity is made up of electrons. So we don't want to just build up electrons. That would create an electrical current, which could do different things chemically to the cell and lead to the cell's destruction. Same thing with the protons, these hydrogen ions that are coming through. Um, 
Some of them will get pumped back into the other side, yes, but a, a few of them don't. They actually, when you take an electron and put it next to a proton, if they meet each other, well, you're going to form a hydrogen ion, right? There's our electrons, there's the hydrogen ions, you're going to form a hydrogen atom. Uh, but hydrogen atoms, remember when we talked about acids and bases, uh, hydrogen atoms are um, uh, easily put together, but they're also easily broken apart. And we have that hydrogen interacting with things. That could lead to, lead to some problems. That's not, a, that's not a chemical reaction we really want to happen at this point. We need to find a way to stabilize that hydrogen atom. Um, and the easiest way to do that is, hey, just take in some oxygen. There's tons of it in the air. Um, we breathe that in. Oxygen who only missing two, uh, two electrons uh, will, will readily grab at uh, other, mo other molecules, especially hydrogen. And when you take two hydrogens and put it with an oxygen, you get water. And water is harmless to us. Again, we say oxygen is the final electron acceptor at the end of the ETC. And even though it didn't do anything in this process, nothing that we've seen so far did we have to have oxygen for. At the very end, oxygen comes in and scoops up the, uh, the you know, the, the electron. It's kind of like whenever you watch like a hero movie. The hero goes through a big journey, has a big battle at the end. He maybe get beat up a bunch, but usually in most movies, the hero ends up winning. And he had to beat the bad guy all by himself. And then who shows up the last possible second? the cops. Um, oxygen is like the cops in that respect. They, they're showing up a little late to the party, but because without oxygen we couldn't have any of this, we give oxygen a lot of credit. This whole thing again is called oxidative phosphorylation. It's just another term for cell respiration. Um, because oxygen, in the presence of oxygen, uh, we are, yes we're creating water, so it's oxidative because we've got to have the oxygen. Phosphorylation because we're adding a phosphate to an ADP to create ATP. So that's, that's, that process is called phosphorylizing it because you're adding a phosphate. Um, so it's oxidative phosphorylization. But oxygen didn't really do much in, in, in the long haul. Um, but without him, this whole process would stop. If there's no oxygen, there is no cell respiration. It is too dangerous. It's too devastating to the cell to even build up a slight charge. If there's nothing there except those electrons, everything shuts off. And that leads us to another problem. If, in order to survive, you've got to have ATP. The more that we move around and stuff, the quicker we burn it off. And generally, we burn off oxygen faster than we can replace it. So let's say something is chasing us. Um, uh, whatever you want to think of, I think a lion. So there's like a lion chasing us. If I'm going to run from this lion, I'm going to need to continually generate ATP. And if it's going to be a long chase, I need to efficiently generate ATP over a long distance. That's not always the case with humans. Generally, for our survival strategy, we would run and hide, or run and get out of the way, or fight back, you know, fight or flight. So you can move a little bit and burn off some oxygen that's in your cells. Um, but after a while, you're going to start running out and you're going to lose that fight. You're not going to be able to outrun that lion for too long. Um, but your body has a backup plan. It's a small backup plan and it's got some problems with it. But it can produce a little tiny bit of energy when there's no oxygen. That, my friends, is much better than no energy at all. And that process is called fermentation.